so much to Lady Jane Solon and to now next to Lady Jane Solon for having me here today. I'm so um, honored and privileged to be sharing your London night with you. Thank you so much for, for coming out and, uh, and hearing us silly authors see us speak about their um, about their passions and their work and their books. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about my um, uh, my book, *Swan in the Daylight*. It is um, it's having its first publication here in the United States, and so I'm very you know proud of that, very excited about it, and wanted to tell you a little bit about that. Um, so a few years ago, uh, when I was on a book tour in Australia, I um, I was sitting there and. A man walked by with his wife, and the store manager rushed towards him and said, now, here we have the renowned, internationally best-selling author Paulina Simons signing her latest book. And he, passing her by, looked at me with cold disdain and said, who's Paulina Simons when she's at home? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so I didn't know what this expression meant, but my publicist assured me that uh, he meant nothing good by that. <laughs> uh, but it happened to be sort of the theme of my novel, A Song in the Daylight. Who is Larissa Stark when she is at home? Uh, well, home for Larissa is a beautiful place in New Jersey. She lives in a beautiful town with beautiful kids, with a dog and a husband. She seems to have everything that she wants, and she herself is a beautiful woman. Life seems very good for Larissa. And then, while food shopping for her family at the local stop and shop in Madison, New Jersey, Larissa meets an exotic stranger on a motorcycle. And just like that, Many of the things that she believed were true about her life vanish one by one. She begins a consuming, life-altering affair with a much younger man, with a man completely wrong for her. Love transports her to a place outside the real world, and yet a place which is more real than the world in which she lives in. Love of this kind is beyond good and evil, C.S. Lewis wrote. It tends to claim for itself a divine authority. Larissa finds herself walking behind a banner of autonomy, of choice, of free will, of self-fulfillment. So what if you had made your choice in life and in the middle of this happy, contented, comfortable, want for nothing existence, you suddenly realize you wanted a different life. Almost everything that Louisa reads tells her to be true to herself. All the self-help books, all the self-improvement books declare it. All the songs sing it to her. Be good to yourself. Love yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, who is going to take care of you? Be truthful. What good is living a lie? Life is too short. We only have this one, our little life. So choose well. Faith, hope, love. Faith, hope, love. But the greatest of these is love. St. Paul himself said it, so it must be true. Love trumps all. Now, to be true to yourself, sometimes you do have to make some tough choices, do difficult things. To make an omelet, you've got to break a few eggs. <laughs> More cliches to help Larissa along. The heart wants what it wants. The whole point of coming up the roads not taken is to take them. Steer your own boat, sail your own seas, fly your own plane. Emphasis always on own. Now on the surface, A Song in the Daylight is about all-consuming passion. But that forbidden love is a vehicle for the other things that were interesting to me and that I was interested in exploring in Larissa's story. 
what is the thing that propels us to make the choices that we make towards one choice or another, towards one life or another? How do we make the decisions that shape the course of our life and change the course of the lives of everyone that we know? Now, in many of the books that I've read, uh, the romantic hero follows uh, a certain path, a familiar path to most of us. A man, often on a horse, rejects societal norms and conventions. He turns his back on his community and he places only himself in the center of his own universe. And then he heads out alone on his adventure. In A Song in the Daylight, I was interested in a different perspective. What if this romantic hero were a woman? And not just a woman, but a wife and a mother. What would her rejection of societal norms and conventions look like? What would her adventure be? What fascinated me about Larissa's story was the question of why we make it with the choices we do. What compels us to pick one thing over another? And what are the consequences of those choices? A Song in the Daylight is the story of a woman on a horse, the center of her own universe, rejecting the rules of society and stripping her life of all good and all bad and choosing to follow her own heart. For the romantic heroine, where would her future be? Where would her redemption lie? So, who is Larissa Stark when she's at home? Well, before she met a man on a bike, she was just another well-peeled wife with a husband, kids, and a house on her hands. She thought she knew who she was. And then Larissa fell in love. No greater fortune could befall her. No greater misfortune could befall her. So I want to read you a little passage from the book now. She was all dressed up on a Saturday night to go celebrate her belated birthday in New York City with her black peep-toe pumps and her dazzling sequin navy blue dress. She had painted her nails red and wore red lipstick to match. She wore her husband's diamonds and rubies on her wrists and her throat. She wore black undergarments and her decolletage as an accessory. Jared chatted about work and how hard it was to reserve a table for 10 at the Union Square Cafe, and how beautiful she looked tonight. And was she feeling all right, because she was rather quiet? Larissa said, I'm not quiet, darling. I'm eagerly anticipating. The lights of the Manhattan skyline were green, sprinkled with nighttime razzle-dazzle before they entered the Lincoln Tunnel, passing through Hoboken. She didn't pray. But now the prayers she heard in her head were her lovers. Larissa, isn't there any way you could go out at night? Please, no Kai. Can I have you overnight to sleep with you, to wake up with you? No Kai. <laughs> well, we'll go away for one night. I'll take you to a beautiful hotel, anywhere you want. No Kai. Larissa, can we go to Samurai Sushi, the new place that opened up in Maplewood? No, Kai. Can I meet your children? No, Kai. Can I have a day with you in the city? You and I, for one day, in the city of dreams, not some in New Jersey. We can ride the circle line. No, Kai. We'll go dancing. No, Kai. Oh, Larissa. Isn't there anything at all that you can do with me? Yes, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.